Same. I'll go <laughs> check on him. <laughs> Where's he? He's in Spain, Spain or Morocco, one or the other, whether wow. he's crossed the water or not, I don't know. Wow, good for him. Ron Hembolt? I'm here, but I will not be here in June, so I thought I'd better mention it because okay. June. If other people are going to be gone. It might be a problem. I don't Absent. Know. Okay. Catherine uh, Kenny? Present. Are you going to be here in June? June? I don't know. Any I others? looked at the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. Probably. Angie Quinn? Here, and I should be here in June. I just got into May. Pam Taylor? Here. Dennis Otto? Here. Lee Trucks? Yes. At this time, anyone who thinks they have a conflict of interest can declare it now. Moving on. <clears throat> Approval of agenda. So moved. Support. Moved and supported to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Agenda's approved. Approval of minutes. You've all received minutes. Um, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Support. Moved and supported to approve the minutes. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Public comment on agenda related items. Hearing nothing, moving on. Um, New business uh, certificate of appropriateness amendment request for 457 River Street. Walk just in time. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so we had to make, uh, I don't know if anybody's driven by the building there, but that brick was not what we had hoped it would be um, behind what we pulled off there. So we've had to make um, changes to what we're going to put there. So um, the idea is we're going to cover that back up, but we're going to cover it up with a board and batten cement board um, side with. And I have some hard copies if you want hard copies of They have hard copies okay. as well. All right. mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so back up where the, uh, the sign is on there, the outsider sign, that red behind there will all be vertical board and batten across there. And then that <clears throat> white area below uh, will be a lap siding, which is what was in the original. Um, it's just that brick is not what we had hoped it would be behind there so it uh it looks like it's been stuccoed over several times mm -hmm. and we did we were going to attempt to remove it but in doing so it, we were going to start compromising the original brick um with it coming off so we don't want to do that so um we chose to go a different route with it uh which is the the red board and batten still trying to keep with the character as much as we could of the of the building as much as we wanted to have that brick exposed we're, we'll, we'll ruin the building if we try to take that stucco off of you're it, talking so. about entirely covering all that brick, brick area yes so, like we'll, we'll cover it the entirety of that side with the board and batten the upper half it's the upper half the, yeah the upper half correct only on the one side only on the one side Yep, because we, we pulled off all the siding that was on there, and our uh, plan was to leave the brick exposed, the original brick exposed, but that's not what was behind there. So, okay. What about you considered a full red brick panel? Pardon me? Full red, uh, red panels that are made for exterior? Have we considered it? Yeah. Uh, it the patterns and brick color. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, we did look at that. <clears throat> we were trying to keep a little, we were trying not to go too industrial look with it. Um, and we felt like the board and batten complemented the building more than like a, like a metal did, so. Oh, this is regular brick panel. Oh, 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 I gotcha. We, we did look at the option of, of facading over top of it with a brick paneling, 
the cost in doing so, because we didn't want to do like a faux brick that looked fake. Um, and to cost to do um, basically a stucco st style brick look to it, the cost was a lot more than what they had planned on in the renovation, so. Is that the only change you're asking for? Correct, yep. That, and then there's just two signs, which isn't a change, but just these um, menu boards kind of to post outside of the patio area. We wanted that's to just- all, That's allowable by the sign ordinance? Um, the Historic District Commission is allowed to make modifications to the sign regulations. Um, I think what they had for wall signs was already slightly exceeding the allotment for that building in the regulation, but they are kind of on a corner, so I think it's, you know, what you guys determined was appropriate. And then with these smaller signs, I think that'd be something that Mark would probably sign off on um, if it was just the signs, but because we were coming before you for the siding, we just threw the signs in there as well. Where, where are the signs going? Um, let's see, they did provide a map here. Um, it would be, I don't have page numbers in your packets, which I apologize for, but it's just before the photos of those um, menu signs outside of the patio. So they have two proposed locations um, that will go facing, it looks like interior and exterior on the River Street side of the patio. And what is that behind Water Street? It is Water Street side. So, so they're not attached to the building? No. No, they're standalone signs and basically what those openings that you see in that document are for people flow into the patio. So those menu boards will be basically. at the entrance of those. Almost, so. almost like a freestanding panel? Yes. Okay. So curious, the stucco, was it a traditional plaster stucco or was it more of a dry bit going on? Um, no, it was a traditional stucco and that was what was causing, we, we tried a little section to try to remove it to expose the brick because that was the ultimate goal, but the brick was starting to come off with it in the removal process and it was just not going to end well. I'm not sure that I understand where these welcome to the outsider signs are going to go. So on, of that patio. on your screen, we have, um, um, so this would be River Street on the right side of the sheet. So and one this of them be, goes here. Okay. Uh-huh, and that's where they have kind of an entrance proposed. Right. And then one over here on the water street. That would be yeah. what, the s south, yeah, southeast corner, yeah. And you're proposing they'll hang on a wood back. The wood structure, yeah. What is the pleasure of the commission? I would uh, make a motion that we approve the um, amendments, amendment requests the COA. As second. The, I would second. It's been moved and seconded to Approve the amendments as submitted. Any more discussion? Can we have a roll call vote? Ron Hembolt? Yes. Catherine Kenny? Yes. Angie Quinn? Yes. Thad Taylor? Yes. Dennis Otto? Yes. Lee Trox? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay, next is a bylaw amendment. <clears throat> um, yes, so I recently had some time to go through some of our, uh, the city's RRC um, kind of documents and there's some ongoing things and strategies and uh, that they provide that they want the city to implement. So one of those was a training strategy for our boards and commissions mm -hmm. and um, the bulk of it was just kind of building into our meetings that training is going to be addressed. So creating a standing agenda item that every month everyone goes through and says, hey, I attended this training or I did not. And then that would also help with me like tracking things because for like the CGL reporting and even RRC, there's annual reporting. Um, so ultimately I think it is a good idea to implement anyway. Um, but I went through the bylaws and I, 
put those um, suggested amendments from RRC in there in red text. I started to go over it with a city attorney um, and he more so had a comment on how I added in conflict of conflicts of interest because that was something we had added to the agenda but it wasn't really in our order of meetings. He didn't have any comments on the training stuff but I will do a final review with him if you guys are accepting of the amendments. But essentially, the only things I really modified was the 3.7 order of business. I don't believe there was anything um, before that that I had amended yet. And then um, just adding in before amendments, I felt it was appropriate to put it like kind of below the annual review of bylaws, annual review of training goals. The commission shall annually review their training goals at the regularly scheduled meeting in December. And then RRC gave a recommendation of four hours of relative trading a year. So I just implemented exactly what they recommended. I'm sure we could modify that if you guys wanted to um, strive for more or felt like that was too much. But it's a pretty straightforward amendment. And um, yeah, if you guys are okay with this, I believe, I haven't done a bylaw amendment in the city yet, but I believe you would make a motion to approve the amendments for council's approval. Um, can we have a motion? I would make a motion that we approve these uh, changes to our bylaws um, and forward them to the council for approval. For approval. Right? Support. It's been moved and supported to approve the changes to the bylaws and submit it to the city council. Um, any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Katie. Yes. What's the difference between a sign and a merchandise or a product? In other words, the teacher, t excuse me, I got no teeth, so I talk funny. <laughs> the t shirt shop, for example, uh -huh. could just throw an enormous amount of stuff in a window and it's not technically a sign, mm -hmm. but it could be much more affronting than a, a small right. sign. Yeah. Well, is, does that enter into it at all? Or? Well, yeah, I mean, if they're putting their products in the windows and those are t-shirts with prints on them, I don't think I would consider that a sign, but there is a lot of case law on zoning and signage because it is such a delicate thing and because it can be interpreted, just, you know, those questions come up just as you're asking. Um, I know that the city's zoning ordinance um, defines a sign as like a collection of anything that, and I don't even think... Um, it has to be like on a specific type of material. It's basically just anything to attract uh, attention and it can be emblems, um, images, words, you know, it really covers a really broad definition of a sign. I mean, I would, in, I would not interpret that products in the window are a sign, um, but I don't know, I guess it could be argued if you started like using your t-shirts as signs, like putting them up in the windows or on the building that that could be argued that's a sign it becomes really like a delicate thing to look at but i would not say that um even though that is a good point that something like that could be much more you know noticeable than even signs on the window that i wouldn't consider that a sign if personally but, i'm not excited about it it's just that someone who's picky about this say wait a minute you said i couldn't have this sign and yet they've got six right. t-shirts with their logo mm -hmm. thing plastered all over the window so yeah well doesn't it have to be basically attached to the window or drawn on the window or painted on the window yeah i think the t-shirts that... in the store i don't know there's anything we can control about it. right and i think that that would maybe change my interpretation if they were physically like plastered on the window but even so it's really towing the line where i don't know it, it it's open for interpretation i guess and then we just have to do our best with the regulation and interpreting them as written because yeah i mean even like the mural if someone wanted to do a mural that's considered a sign it just because you're painting it on a building if you're painting something that's advertising products that you sell and that's attracting attention to your business that's now considered a sign even if there's no words on it even if it doesn't say we're open name of the business 
that could also be a sign. So yeah, it's a good valid question and it does become a little bit gray in, in areas, but yeah, the I mean, t-shirt example, what, I would probably just chalk that up to a coin I, dealer that says coins and, you know, coins and gold and he has coins in the window behind the window. I mean, he's advertising coins too, and, and it relates to his mm -hmm. business, and it, it's even in his business name. I don't know that we can consider all his coins a sign. Right, you know, but then if he's painting big push coins. The there, I think, I mean, you know, as long as it's not on the window or attached to the window, I don't know that That'd probably be where I draw the line, yeah. Because, yeah, if he's painting big coins on the window, <laughs> then all of a sudden that is a sign even though that's still just coins on the window. So yeah, it's it's a delicate thing. And there's a lot of Michigan case law on signage for these exact type of scenarios where a zoning administrator says, hey, that's a sign. And someone says, no, that's not a sign or that's not what that's intended for. And then they take it all the way up through the courts and uh, you know a determination is made. But it is a very delicate thing, especially with First Amendment too. Is know, writing so. on the sidewalk a sign or is that graffiti? Uh, that is something that I do not touch because it's a public right of way and I just have the police department <laughs> make that determination. So, I mean, I would cons I would probably consider that a sign if that was something I had to enforce on. Um, but luckily, all the sidewalks on River Street are technically public right away and I don't have to <laughs> dive into that one too much. But that has been something that's come up recently too. So. Mm -hmm. It's graffiti. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think, and I'm not sure where the police department is at with that. They were trying to figure out if there is a truly, like, ticketable offense, if that was something that they were going to try to, um, you know, enforce on. So I'm not sure where they're at with that, but. Wouldn't that be kind of defacing public property? I mean. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, to, I guess, yeah, to I mean, a degree. If you really want to technically... Moving, right. Moving on, can we go to uh, <laughs> Old the update, update amendment and zoning ordinance signs, if we're going to talk about signs? Yes. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys an update that the Planning Commission did move to hold a public hearing at their last month's meeting based off your guys' recommendation to implement the signage guidelines into the zoning ordinance so that it's clear in there for anyone who's in the HGC, hey, these guidelines exist, like reference these guidelines for exempt signs or for any requirements. Um, so that public hearing will be held tomorrow. I anticipate everything being very straightforward. I haven't gotten any comments on it. Um, it's you know the type of amendment that just provides more clarification. We're not really changing any regulation or the intent of that. So I don't foresee any issues with that. And I just wanted to give you guys an update that that will be occurring. And that's all I had for um, that agenda item, unless you guys have questions. Uh, moving on to the bylaw, um, the HGC guidelines. Um, yes, yeah, so I had sent the guidelines to Alan Higgins with SHPO on April 10th, and he just sent me a simple email back. These look great. Um, so I guess that's all there is to that process. And so I would just like final approval of the amended guidelines. I'll get those into a final draft form and send them to Kelly to be added to the website. I have a quick question if I can, mm -hmm. um, regarding the, the signage. So yesterday I was, I was, uh, uh, I was um, asked by an individual with, uh, with the, um, what's, the name of, what's the name of the group? Archie. Margie group. Mm -hmm. um, they put a new sign together, you know, similar to what they had, uh, you know, like a year or so ago, and mm -hmm. it's kind of a different sign. It's laminated, you know, um, and they want to place them in businesses as they did uh, within the HDC, or excuse me, within the historic district, as they did a couple years ago. So do I have to approve that? No. Um, or, or, or is that, you know, because it might I be talked, in the window for three or four months. Right. So, I mean, how do you... How, I talked to Mr. Albee about that okay. because Lee had emailed me about it and um, Mick, Mick from the Planning Commission mm -hmm. had contacted me and he came into our office. Um, I told him that I would consider that a temporary window posting okay. under the new regulation okay. and that that would be approved, you okay. know, that we're anticipating that being finally sure. approved tonight. And I did also let him know, because it kind of sparked the idea, and I should tell you guys this too, that I want to do another mass mailing to everyone in the HTC because we had done that 
when we initially started looking at the signage guidelines mm -hmm. to tell everyone, hey, you know, you're really not supposed to be posting anything in your windows without HTC approval. Mm -hmm. But now that we've worked through the guidelines mm -hmm. and the regulation, I want to send out another mass mailing and saying, hey, check it out. These are amended. This okay. is what you're allowed to do. And I had told Mr. Albi of that as well, and he seemed satisfied okay. um, with that conversation. Okay. So he, because he, yeah, because he told me that he had spoken with some other merchants and that they said, well, go go see Mark and get this approved. And I'm, I was just kind of thinking, well, right. we're, kind of, we're kind of really uh, getting to the nation. Yeah. You know, this is maybe a little bit too, too, too specific. Too and that too was the whole point of, 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 the, of, the, of the amendments. I'm, yeah. I, yeah, the, the amendments. I'm you know happy to, to, uh, to, to do the work to do that, but where, yeah. where do we draw the line at a single laminated sign that's right. a community, you know, goodwill mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So he I just wanted to make sure that that was. There is another issue with that sign. Um, yeah, I, I could probably, should, yeah. I could probably include a printout of the guidelines. That would be nice. That way they're not wondering what changed. And Right. I was, I was thinking about including a link. Um, just thinking about, cause this is like, well, they're only three pages front and back. I just don't want it to get too heavy. Yeah, too yeah. heavy that all of a sudden we're you know paying a couple bucks just to send out. Um, Isn't there a time out. limit in the new um, in the changes for the sign on there? Sixty days 60 for temporary days. posting. So so would that be a temporary yeah. posting? So for sixty days and then it has to come down. Yeah, I mean sixty days and. I mean, I guess it could be kind of argued to take it down and put it back up or something like that. I don't know. I mean, I don't think that that's something that's going to be strict. Like, I'm not going to be going out and making sure things are being taken down after 60 days. But yes, to follow the guidelines, it's the 60 day limit. So, um, yeah. I'm not going to police it. You know, right. I mean, you, know, I mean, you and, aren't, and I'm not sure the police won't. Right. You know, it's but. one of those things that that exists so that we can, and I, I hate to say it like this, so that we can fall back on it, but it's not going to be something that is, you know, we're going out and making sure. But if someone did have something posted that we needed to enforce on, then we have that regulation to fall back on, I would say. And it has to be less than 50% of their window covered. So they yes. can't make it really big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or they can't cover their whole window with all these notifications. Yes, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Is that's pretty much the new regulations that we're proposing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This this type of thing, I think, is exactly what that regulation is intended for. Temporary signage that we don't want to have Mark having to issue permits for, and that is really a non-issue, and it's not going to take up the whole window. It's not going to affect the historical integrity of the building. Not permanent. I think this is exactly what that regulation is for. Mm -hmm. So did you want a final approval? Yes. Of the guidelines? Yes, please. Um, I would move that we approve this final um, draft of our new signage guidelines. Support. It's been moved, moved and supported to approve the changes to the guidelines. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, it passes. Uh, where are we? Permit review. Permit review. <clears throat> um, so we have just a couple new permits on here. Um, I believe maybe only two because you guys approved the library windows and then we had Snyder shoes. Oh wait, is this the wrong? I think I might be a month back for you guys on this. I did update this more. Let me see. Or no, maybe I just didn't update the date because yeah, we have end of April permits in here. Okay, so this is actually the 329.23 is a little bit off because we have permits passed then in here. But yeah, you guys approved the windows at the library and then Snyder Shoes is updating their sign but it doesn't look all that different and then um, the Golden Stag applied for signage as well. So I included those site plans for you guys could, so you could see the administratively approved um, couple of permits that we had between now and last month. Any questions? Correspondence. None. 
reports, DDA Executive Director and Economic Development Director. Should have all received a report from the DDA uh, Economic Development Director. Museum Curator. Yeah, I just have something really quick. Um, last year, probably in the fall, I presented you with the uh, historic walking tour booklet. It's like a 150 page booklet. And these have been out for a while, but this is basically a condensed version of that. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen these, but these are just a map, basically um, of 90 minute walking tours. Um, you know, when you, go to a, when you go to a concert and you want to hear all the hits, you say shut up and play the hits. This is basically that version of, this is a version of shut up and play the hits. Basically, um, uh, just uh, the, the big deals uh, downtown um, and a little bit of a brief little history of it. Um, and then likewise, uh, where the museums are in the city as well as uh, where some of the cool houses are. Uh, just, uh, you know, oftentimes at the museum or you, you get, well, my spouse is out playing golf and I don't like the golf. What do you got, you know, to kind of keep me busy for a couple hours? Um, and so um, this is, these are, uh, this is just a version of that to kind of, people just want a little bit of history about our community and some of the cool architecture that we have. So, um, yes, absolutely. So, so, Mark, yes. I have a confession. Yes. Um, Sammy Lukashevitz from the Visitor Center. Yes. Um, gave me a whole box full of those. Uh -huh. I was supposed to bring them to a meeting and pass them out to everyone. Uh -huh. and still sitting. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants lots of them, just ask me. Let me get rid of my box first. Oh. Can, if you we want, take them yeah, I was going to say, if you want, think on, of it. We could take some of them in the planning department. Yeah, yeah, I, I and we can put them in the available. courthouse, too. Oh. Put them in bring you the box. spots. Yeah. I'm going to take the box to these fine ladies. Okay. And then we can put them at some popular they spots are, uh, in town. They are available. I know at several stores and I think some of the hotels as well as at the visitor center and at Angie's house too so if you want to swing down there she'll she'll be happy to, to give that to give you don't say anything <laughs> um, but yes yeah Ron did you have a, a question well just for Angie um, just I don't know what day it was last week one day I was wandering around in the kitchen store and these two couples came in and that was exactly what they wanted to know we'd like to just walk around because we hear all this stuff and so all these places like the kitchen store or whatever probably needs a pretty good stash of yeah. them because they could go through several of them on a Saturday or whatever. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. mm -hmm. So you could probably get rid of them without much trouble. <laughs> well, I, I found someone to take the We'll be getting more. Yeah. That's, that's, that's basically all I have. So, um, uh, so yeah, uh, kind of a fun way to, Thank you. Uh, fun, quick way to discover some of our cool history here in town. That's a fun thing. And that's what I got. I don't see my house. <laughs> I said the hits, Dennis. No. <laughs> it's the greatest hits. <laughs> nice, Mark. <coughs> Planning and zoning administrator. Um, I don't have a whole lot for you guys. I did just want to provide a brief update. I don't know if any of you would be would have been made aware that. Um, it does appear that the city is going to look to pull zoning in-house. So the county planning department will no longer, if that is how everything shakes out, we, we will not facilitate um, the city anymore. So I know the city's voting on budget tonight and we've kind of told our county boards and commissions, so I just felt it was appropriate to tell you guys um, our contract is done September 30th, so we're kind of anticipating, you know, fulfilling to the end of the contract, and then the city's gonna, you know, post that position and have an in-house employee. So, um, yeah, it very well may be someone else with you guys in the next, within the next year. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you, and I wasn't sure if you would have been privy to the budget discussions at city council and such, so. If you have any questions on that, I'm happy to answer, but it's still very much up in the air, I think, at this point, but that does seem like the direction that things are gonna go, so. I just have one comment. I think it's a, an unfortunate decision to even present that to the council. 
Yeah, I mean, personally, um, to be completely honest, I do not think I'm going to pursue the position. Um, I think it's a very big ask of whatever individual is going to be taking on that position to do that as one individual. For the entire city? Yeah. For the, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Planning and zoning and mm -hmm. some other community development functions and potentially building permits as well. So they're, they're, the goal is to build a community development department, from what I understand, but that is going to start with one person. That, so That person won't have the capacity right. to do everything that the city's gonna be asking. I mean, just, right, just which is why. Planning and zoning and HDC and mm -hmm. you know, uh, redevelopment ready communities. Right, yeah. which is why I, I mean, I'm very happy with my team at the county and with my position regardless, but um, I don't know that I am comfortable with stepping into that type of role so i don't think it's going to be something that i pursue personally but hopefully whoever does step into the role is successful and um you know set up for success and they handle everything and they're great staff to you guys but yeah that seems like what what is going to be the case so if you stay around long enough everything comes around again we're going back to the <laughs> development department that you said you used to have about 30 years ago yeah, so I just wanted to give that update to you guys. I'm sure there'll be more to come on that, but council is supposed to um, vote on the budget tonight, the final budget. So, yep. But that is all I have for you. Public comment. Member discussion. I have one thing that the EDA has got a, is having series of meetings on Friday. Yes. On sort of the plans of where the DDA is going and their streetscape and what the, all this kind. Of, it's probably a good idea that at least some people from the uh, HDC should be there. I'm going to try to make it, but. Uh, I plan on attending the uh, middle session. I can't remember. I think it's like noon to two or something like that. 2 p.m. It's mm -hmm. eight. It's 8.30 to 10.30, noon to 2 p.m., and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. If you go to the noon one, I'll go to the 4 to 6 p.m., but if somebody okay. wants to hit the earlier one. And I'm sorry, was that today or tomorrow or Friday? Friday. Friday. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have an all-day commitment on Friday, so I won't be able to attend. And then they also have um, a survey that went out. So Mark... I met with Mark Miller this morning and he forwarded me, I didn't have a chance to um, send out the email, but he did send out a survey as well. So if you can't attend the public input sessions, they'd be happy to see the survey done too, anything that you guys can provide, I know, so. I think you sent that out as an email, but you mentioned something about open meeting and, and we would have to be careful about how many of us are right. attending. What is that number? So they, you guys have a quorum with four, I believe. So just being conscious of not having a quorum. And even if ultimately, you know, there is a quorum there, it's more so being conscious of discussing historic district commission matters outside of an open meeting. So like, you know, you guys are allowed to meet collectively and not discuss HGC stuff. We just try to steer clear of that because it can be difficult when you get the group together to not talk about things that you know might come up um, during an open meeting but ultimately so in that email they had put that to be conscious of you know not having a quorum and that's why they did the three sessions but ultimately if four of you are there just try not to stand all four of you in a group you know what I mean like just be conscious of it the other kind component of, a thing. of that is you can't deliberate to a decision right um, and so you know if, if you're not discussing something mm -hmm. that you're going to deliberate and make a decision on it, you're okay. You could have right. a whole commission there. And even so, to piggyback off that, you could technically discuss commission matters outside of an open meeting as long as you address that that discussion occurred outside of the open meeting. So, yeah, there's kind of the decision factor, as that indicated, is the real ticket of what you don't want to do. But we just try to, you know, when we do these outside of meeting things, try to organize them in a way that we don't form a quorum. That's good advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What time is the Friday morning one? 8.30 to 10. 8.30 to 10.30. I could probably go to that one. Okay. And then head off to work. Is this, gonna, is this, is this more like a, a, what their plans are for the DDA or for the district, or is it more like a strategic, hey, I want to see this, or so, asking input 
to I want the to ladder. Send it to my, Ferris wheel on River Street. Yeah. Someone throws it on the board. It's going to be one of those deals? I believe so, oh, yeah. It's going to be more of like a brainstorming. I know that they're getting a streetscape study and plan done. Okay. So I think this is the initial steps okay. of receiving public input okay, to it. move forward with their streetscape plan and then ultimately okay, implement so that plan. So they can check this, check this off their list of to do stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Ferris wheel will be really cool on River Street. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, Okay, I was kind of curious as to if it was more strategic or is it kind of more of a reveal, you know? So yeah, no, I think it's very much in its infancy at this point. Yeah. They're like, what are the ideas? What do people want to see? Okay. Kind of a oh, thing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything more on that? I have something else I'd like to discuss. Uh, Deanna Marsh came into my office today mm -hmm. and um, they're opening up the Alpine Chocolate Store next to the Spice Store, mm -hmm. and the um, Safe Built folks told her that they had to stop production because they don't have a certificate of appropriateness from the Historic District Commission. Um, so she came down to ask me about it. Um, I was in a meeting and kind of short with her, so I sent her to Mark, but I told her if she didn't have any exterior work being done, mm -hmm. that she didn't need that, mm -hmm. but they were stopping her from proceeding with her upgrade. Um, so she was going to come. It's all interior work. Mm -hmm. So and maybe I just I, need to follow up with safety. Yeah. I didn't see her. I, I didn't see her at all. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Mark Miller had brought that up to me at our meeting this morning that the HCC is stopping Alpine Chocolate House. And I'm like, well, I haven't talked to anyone. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, they're not. Yeah, so, but maybe sometimes Safe Built, which I do appreciate, Safe Built can be a stickler for certain things. Mm -hmm. um, but I can usually resolve that, which is shooting them a quick email explaining. So I'll make sure to do that. And um, she also mentioned that there was a, an issue with the Historic District Commission for. Um, for Cano's, which I said I haven't seen anything about that. Of course, I wasn't here last month, but I don't see anything on the agenda. Mm -mm. And I invited her to come to the meeting today, but yeah, yeah, I have it on my to-do list to give her a call. I haven't heard anything about for Cano's. Um, from what I understand, they had satisfied everything with their facade improvements that they've already done. Isn't that complete? Yeah, like it, it's been complete for a while. They're extending their deck, I believe. Oh, okay. So they purchased the city marina property. Is that correct, Dad? I, I don't know if they've completed the, the purchase. Last I knew, they were still working with the, the um, DNR on satisfying mm -hmm. the grant requirements to, to sell it. And they were working on yeah. it. It had to have some kind of uh, in-kind swap of recreational property. And I don't know where it's gone from there. So that's it. So, <laughs> Catherine, if, if I can, did, I mean, she, did she stop work or anything? I mean, it, well, she was pretty upset, and then after my meeting, I went down to you know check in with her and see if she had it resolved anything, and she was on the phone and. Um, I'll yeah. I'll give her a call when Please. yeah before five yeah. like because we'll probably get back to the office before five o'clock and I'll make that my thing to do when I get back to the office yeah. and then so I'll get the details from her and I'll shoot off an email to Safe Built um, once I talk to her and say hey you know interior improvements do not require a certificate of appropriateness there's no permitting that needs to be satisfied for this work and then I assume because when Mark had brought it up this morning Mark Miller I was like maybe a sign or something but I'm like you would have just signed yeah, off yeah. there's nothing I, holding I, I, them not like that I've, not that right I've come across my yeah so we'll we'll sort it out though you know like I, I if, if I remember correctly you know Tom Amor came down with a with a sign proposal I, I think he did for, for Alpine okay but maybe I, he just hasn't gotten it to me signed, yet yeah signed off yeah but I mean there was there's no right yeah. mm -hmm. if I remember correctly and the yeah. sign's not up. They still have paper in the window. They're just doing interior work. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll figure it out and make sure they're good to go. Yeah. Anything mm -hmm. with chalk play, I mean, come on. Yeah, <laughs> right? We gotta get and this place really open. I heard they have chocolate-covered <laughs> potato chips, so I <laughs> cannot wait to try that. I saw images of the chocolate-covered <laughs> potato chips on their Facebook page. So Maybe we better bring this meeting to a close so Katie can get back to the office <laughs> yeah. and solve this right. problem. <laughs> We adjourn. <laughs> we done? I got it. Support. Cool.
this pen so bad, but I'm not going to. Hmm? I want to steal this pen so bad, but I'm not going to. <laughs> it's a nice one. Nice one. Yeah. Don't get, what kind is it? I don't know. Ooh, you get it's like an it's enterprise. It's a ballpoint, and I like it. It writes nice. That's a good sign. That means the is sun it? is warming things up, I'm sure. It's been cold in my house. Though. I don't like the pens that we buy at the office. I don't I can't use stand them. them. They bleed they, everywhere and well, stuff. They bleed, but they write and then they won't write. They yeah. Write and then they, write. They, they hit and miss. And that's like one of those things I feel like. Jess, <laughs> just not such a stink about where just, just get different pens. Can we just throw all these away? <laughs> Buy new ones. I know that, but choosing a pen. Watch this. Hey, you like that one too? Yeah. yeah. Just try not. Build it. Build it. Nope. That's not started either. When is Joe supposed to start or complete that window on? He said he was going to do it right away. He got a year, just like anyone else, because that's, you know, what I put on the permit, and I figured right. he'd probably need it, and he was so adamant that he was going to get him out there right away, and I drive by there all the time, because any time I'm coming down and I have to turn back around to go up, like go to City Hall or whatever, I look, and I'm like, well, oh, it hasn't changed, so... And did you get my email about the yes. garage door? I, I was just curious. I looked at it, and then I I have been in meetings all day, so I haven't really, okay. like, um, but they're putting your garage door on River Street side? No, it's on the Riverwalk side. They already did it. They took a window out and put That's it That's what the they had approval door. for last month. Okay. Yep. The 457 River, Downtown Delight. So you guys approved it last month. No, no, not that one. Oh. It's the new restaurant, the White, the Golden Stag. They on the river side. On the river side, oh, an overhead. No, they can't do that. They already did. It's done. They're supposed to come to you guys for that. <laughs> just because it's on the river side doesn't mean that so, it doesn't and apply. I don't want to be punitive. I just want to educate people that they just they have to get a permit. To do so yeah. at least check into it and find okay. out. Okay. I will contact. Um, you know, contact and she, she posted on Facebook one day that they were going to put a mural in their building. Or on their own. Yeah, don't pay someone and, to do that I, without I approval. I reached out to her and, and said I that's you know has to go through the historic <laughs> district commission, but it's inside, so I'm like, oh, that's fine. It's inside. I'll go um, take some pictures and look at it, but and then don't forget that the river block is part of right. The well, district. the buildings don't magically become non-historic on the back side, uh, you know, like they people still need to come to you for all that. Like you, that's. I feel like people forget that too, that it's not just aesthetics, it's about preserving the historical integrity of these buildings. They and a big hole in the building. Oh, right. it's a oh, huge, shoot. like two car garage door. <laughs> Anyway. Okay. okay. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. And I walked the river walk with my boyfriend last weekend, and I didn't even see that over there either. Are they planning on some kind of mass skill or something? You know what I think it is, and I'm just speculating here, is that's where they used to put in the wood for the wood-fired pizza oven. And so you could see all of the wood piled up through the window. So now it's probably just easier for them to unload the wood for Pizza oven right. It's an door. Well, I know so. that they have residential apartments up there too. So I'm like, are you like putting a whole garage in there? Like, oh, maybe. That's yeah, it. that's kind of what I was There's thinking. There's no windows in it. It's just right. A because I know they don't have parking for their tenants over there. Um. So yeah, I'll look into it and address it with them though. Thank you. Oh, you've got a tough job. <laughs> Hey, they just gotta follow the rules. At least I have a rule book to fall back on. I'm like, I'm not making this up, people. <laughs> we don't do this for our pleasure. Yeah. Trust me. I could care less. <laughs> Personally. <laughs> I don't know. AirPods or something? Case. I thought maybe it was stuff in there, but it's not. Somebody, somebody be back to get their stuff.
this is why. Yeah. It's just another reason. Right, why. yeah, and Lee, yeah, he's like, you know, well, back to back to what it was. It's everything's cyclical. Like, yeah. But well, that's the city. That's the city's doing. Oh shoot, did I? I already unplugged that thing. I don't know if I ever. Am I the only one 